श्री त्रिपुरा रहस्यम महात्म्या खंडम चैप्टर ट्वेंटी थ्री ओ विनरेबल गुरु आई वुड लिसन टू आई वुड लाइक टू लिसन एट लेंथ टू दिस स्टोरी फॉर व्हाट रीजन वाज गौरी सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम शंकरा हाउ वाज शी बोर्न टू दक्षा हु इंसल्टेड शिवा Why had the great Lord Shiva to face insult, O Lord? Please describe about all these to me, who is your servant. Sweetly requested by Parashurama, Guru Dattatreya, an eminent orator said thus, O Bhargava Rama, listen, I will tell you the story about the curse on Gauri. In the past, a demon, Bhasmasura. propitiated shiva through severe penance and obtained a perplexing boon that the person on whose head that the person on whose head he places his palm will be immediately reduced to ashes having got that boon the demon in order to test it proceeded to place his hand on the head of shiva then the god started running pursued by the demon shiva out of fear disappeared searching everywhere for mahadeva the separated devi with extreme sorrow abandoned her body then vishnu adopting a trick killed the great demon later daksha prajapati pleased devi shiva by his penance then the pleased bodiless gauri the vouchsafer of boons only in her incorporeal form urged him to seek a boon he requested thus o shankari live in my house as my daughter granting that boon she was born as uma daksh prajapati gave dakshayani in marriage to shiva and felt elated being his father in law on one occasion brahma along with vishnu and others met shiva the group of gods and prajapatis also arrived there even daksha went there seeing him the group of gods the seers and others stood up accepting brahma vishnu and shiva then the proud daksha burning with the flame of anger uttered harsh words to shiva he said this shambhu who is like my disciple is standing atop the pillar of pride and bereft of good conduct by not standing and respecting me his elder is unfit to be in this assembly hearing the words of daksha brahma the lord of the world said do not talk like a stupid person and stopped him from that time daksha was insulting shiva on all occasions once daksha while performing a sacrifice invited all the gods seers and sages except shiva because of the earlier enmity out of anger towards shiva he did not invite even dakshayani his daughter when the yajna was going on dakshayani heard from the celestial beings about the grand and praiseworthy yajna by her father she requested shankara to see that yajna although prevented by shiva she went to the place of yajna where her father was involved seeing her father she addressed him with love dear father was i forgotten by you for this laudable yajna you have invited other daughters along with their husbands why did you not invite me along with shiva hearing nirani daksha said with red anger with red angry eyes thus o oh daughter listen Shiva does not deserve worship in this yajna and because of your association with him you have not been invited 
Hearing the insulting words of her father, Sati said, O oh father, you are suffering from the most inauspicious mental aberration, even as a person on deathbed sees everything topsy turvy. Shiva is highly auspicious and venerable. The yajna, where he is not honored, will never be complete. O oh father, your yajna, your yajna, although replete with arrangements, without Shiva, it lacks elegance just as a well-decorated woman without a garment, a brahmin without erudition, a lady without a husband, and king without strength, a boat without a navigator, the night without the moon, the day without the sun. Hearing the words of Dakshayani, the angry Daksha said thus, Fie upon you, why are Fie upon you who are muttering uselessly. Are you blind as not to see your inauspicious husband called Shiva who dwells in burial ground who wields who a human skull who is clothed in tiger skin who is decorated with serpents who has devils and spirits as followers who has a garland of bones whose locks are matted and who is a dancer, not a, means actor also. Who can, who can such a reprehensible person be worthy of? How can such a reprehensible person be worthy of worship during a yajna? Get back to your unfortunate husband. Hearing the words of her father that were insulting. Her husband, Dakshayani, closing her ears with her hands and burning with anger, said, O oh father, your insolence towards the great God is unbecoming. Because of your disrespect to my husband, Maheshwara, your sacrifice will be futile. This body of mine, having heard such an insult, is unfit to exist. Saying thus, Dakshayani jumped into the great sacrificial fire and was reduced to ashes. O Bhargava, that was how Dakshayani was born to ashes on hearing the insult to her husband because of the curse from Lakshmi. After hearing that story, Parashurama, filled with the joy of drinking its essence, inquired thus, O Bhargavan, O Bhagavan, is this Ganga the embodiment of Shakti, prayed by Brahma and others for the welfare of the world? Who is she, the embodiment of Brahman? And how did she become Ganga? I am very much interested to hear. Bless me and let me know about it. Inquired thus by Parashurama, Dattatreya narrated, O Parashurama, listen, it is Tripura, Kumari, the triple formed Shakti who is known as Ganga, who has manifested to purify the earth. She is the consort of Parabrahman, the embodiment of liberated consciousness, who is worshipped with great devotion by Brahma and others. By seeing, touching and even drinking a drop of the most excellent Ganga, all sins will be absolved. This Tripura takes three courses and hence known as Tripatha. And hence known as Tripatha. She follows as a visible river because of compassion towards human beings. Therefore, it is Tripura Sundari who is called as Ganga in her form as the river. O Parashurama, I have narrated everything about your inquiry. End of the 23rd chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam. Chapter 24 Having listened to the Tatraya Parashurama, who was soaked in the 
ambrosial story once again started to inquire the guru about the earlier legend o venerable guru o ocean of compassion after listening to your narration all my sorrow attachment and fear have disappeared without any residue my desire to listen to you is not in the least satisfied that being so please tell me completely how after the destruction of manmatha the sacrifices dear to the gods came into practice how was god shankara defeated by kama how manmatha who was reduced to ashes was restored to life thus inquired by parashurama the tatraya the excellent among gurus and the best among speakers addressed parashurama o supremely intelligent parashurama listen to the answer listen to the answers to your questions one by one the auspicious past is really wonderful after kama was vanquished indra the lord of the heaven who was set free went back to the city of gods and resided there as in the past along with all the gods as long as king veeravrata ruled the earth indra was friendly with him after a long lapse of time indra went to satyaloka along with the group of gods and prostrated before brahma seeing indra brahma filled with compassion uttered friendly and dignified words o lord of the gods stand up and let me know your desire which i will fulfill and make you happy listening to brahma indra along with the gods stood up and with folded hands started with these words o brahma in the past inspired by you we secured the blessings of mahalakshmi and she sent to fulfill our wants the very powerful kama who was defeated by veeravrata and captured along with the gods and was released by the righteous veeravrata upon the advice of his guru then all these days we have been friendly to veeravrata even now the human beings are not worshiping the gods anywhere on the earth i have come along with the gods to entreat you i am with the gods in accordance with your earlier instructions listening to indra the creator meditated for a while and said thus o oh indra listen presently human beings will not perform any yajna because of the absence of desires in them i will give you a plan listen i will make you the lord of the rain and you will and you create showers on the on the earth where people perform yajna invoking you till now the rain bearing clouds were independent and used to shower everywhere according to my instructions from now on they will come under your control das indra became the lord of the rain and hence people who desired rain had to take to yajna thus on the earth the agriculturists performed yajna and yajna was promulgated o parashurama i will let you know how kama conquered mahadeva after lakshmi and bhavani were pacified kama with folded hands asked his mother lakshmi das o mother advise me how can i vanquish shiva in the battle if there is no plan for that i will discard my body in your presence for respectable people loss of honor is worse than death today people are thinking that i am alive let them think so but it is not good that i should live hearing kama lakshmi meditated for a moment on shri tripura sundari and bowed to her then looking at kama said to him o oh kama i will now let you know the highest secret by which you can win everyone in the battle you should not disclose this to anyone even by mistake or otherwise 
I will tell you the hundred and eight names of Sri Tripura Sundari that were obtained by me by serving Kameshwari. That quickly pleases her and that caused the greatness of even Shiva and others. O Manmatha, without delay, return to me after purifying yourself in the Viraja river. With eyes booming with joy on hearing the words of Lakshmi, Manmatha stood bowing by her side after finishing ablutions in the Viraja waters. Meanwhile, Lakshmi in the prescribed method worshipped Mahadevi who was installed on a gem set pedestal with desired materials of worship. Then calling Kama, Lakshmi conferred the blessings of Sri Tripura Sundari to the folded palms of Kama and then chanted the 108 names of Sri Devi and described the comprehensible beauty of the Devi. After obtaining the secret names of Sri Tripura, Kama prostrated before his mother and blessed by her, addressed her with folded hands and with a sense of achievement, O mother, grant me permission. I will proceed to propitiate the Supreme Devi Tripura, who is the protectress of the three gods, viz. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Praying thus and bowing to her, Kama, meditating with devotion on the lotus feet of Sri Tripura, moved to the divine caves of the Mandara mountain. In the mountain, Manmatha sat under the auspicious Kadamba tree, which was by the side of a limpid and luscious river. After bathing there and sitting, he meditated in his heart on the form of the Devi and mentally worshipped her in splendid detail as instructed by Lakshmi and recited with supreme devotion the hundred and eight names of Sri Tripuramba. Pleased with Manmatha, who was daily repeating with concentration the hundred and eight names, the auspicious Supreme Devi appeared in his dream in the form of Rama and said words dripping with honey, O Kama, my child, how can you achieve your aim just by repeating many times the names alone and not obtaining my mantra vidya? Hearing that, Kama, bowing with folded hand, said thus, O mother, I do not know the mantra since you have not told me that earlier. O compassionate mother, please teach me that mantra. Then. The compassionate great Devi said thus to Kama, My child, even now you have not known in the same manner as a blind person, the moon, the secret fifteen-lettered mantra which is hidden in the prayer of hundred and eight names. Stanzas 51, 52, 53 contain the fifteen-lettered mantra of Devi in a codified manner which has to be understood in conjunction with the Saubhagya Ashtottara given in chapter 26, stanzas 11 to This is indeed the great causal knowledge about the physical form of Tripura Sundari. Saying thus, the great Devi disappeared instantly. Then Manmatha opened his eyes and looked around. He could not see the mother and was depressed. He thought within himself thus, the dream which I saw was really very auspicious. Meditating on the mother of the universe, I am unable to sleep. Six months have passed while I am practicing daily. Even during nights I never slept because of meditation. Thinking thus, he recapitulated the dream and started surmising the fifteen-lettered mantra derived from the prayer containing the names. Because it was a dream, he thought, 
of that as an illusion then he heard an incorporeal voice hearing the distinct incorporeal voice that, that said oh karma you should not have any doubt regarding this karma contemplated again and again and being unable to come to a, to any conclusion remembered his mother rama remembered by karma lakshmi appeared and standing near him said o oh karma why have you remembered me seeing rama near him karma bowed and with folded palms narrated his dream exactly and the voice from the sky hearing this lakshmi meditated for a long time and happily said o oh karma my child you are the most fortunate your desires are fulfilled it was the transcendent shri tripura sundari who herself addressed you in your dream discard that doubt and take her words as truth and continue practicing shri vidya then lakshmi suddenly disappeared then kama practiced mentally that mantra for 3 divine years and the great devi appeared before him seeing the brilliant manmatha who had controlled his breath and senses who was steadfast immobile and unperturbed the devi compassionately assumed an effulgent form conforming to the teachings of rama and said o oh kama my child ask me what you want hearing the words of lakshmi manmatha quickly opened his eyes and saw devi tripura sundari who was extremely beautiful and resplendent who had appeared in the same form on which he was meditating he was drowned in the ocean of joy end of the 24th chapter of the mahatmya khandam of shri tripura rahasyam chapter 25 manmatha saw devi tripura sundari shining like a ruby decorated with a beautiful gem studded crown her crown carried the bright crescent moon her forehead doubly red from the vermilion and lalantika an ornament on the forehead her three eyes were bright like bloomed blue lilies her aristocratic side glances were mingled with the diamonds with the diamond earrings the pink luster generated from her nose pearl and red lips spread in all directions and the row of her teeth vanquished the pride of the jasmine buds her wonderful face was like a lotus born out of the peak of the lotus bud like neck and her fingers at the end of the soft creeper like arms were like a row of buds the waves of rays from her gem set bangles were mixed with the luster of her moon like nails her breasts were like lotus buds sprouting from the stalk like pearl necklaces the three folds near her navel pond were like the steps of the pond the hair on her stomach was like the moss settled on her stalk like diamond chain her ornaments were shining from within her red silk blouse and dress the waist band around her delicate waist was studded with star like gems she was wielded she was wielding the rope noose the god the flower arrows and striped and striped sugarcane bow her silk garment that was touching her ankles was embroidered with shining gems her feet were decorated with swan shaped anklets and ornaments she was fragrant from profusely smeared saffron camphor and musk she exuded the fragrance of the kadamba flower that decorated her ear and she was wearing a garland made of lotus vakula and jasmine flowers 
she was looking grand being fanned on either side by rama and vani with small fans seeing her manmatha was filled with excessive joy and tears horripilated manmatha fell prostrate before her immersed in the ocean of bliss he was unable to see speak or even rise after seeing the great mother seeing the state of manmatha shri tripurambika said o kama stand up and see me in the same form as meditated upon by you i am pleased with you tell me what you want i will grant it to you listening to what shri tripura sundari said manmatha stood up and with folded hands and a voice choked with joy started praising her i worship kameshwari who is the unique primordial cause of creation and whose glances are compassionate i do not beg any other god any time even for a small favor i solicit that unique devi who wields the god the news the flower arrows and the bow i need no others who are called gods but the lotus feet of the supreme devi the side long glances of shri tripura that are soaked in the waves of compassion are supreme in the world i see her as the unique mother here let me have desired or undesired results from the continuous worship of the desireless mother of the trinity of gods but i will never seek other hosts of gods let the let that lalita alone the empress the venerable the one who is served by mahesha sport in my heart daily let not other gods be propitiated by me may devi tripura whose feet are sought by hari hara and others bestow eternal happiness to me i bow and appeal to her the haya rudra who leads the army and rides the horse may the charming kameshwari who wields the sugar cane bow the flower arrows protect me always through her compassionate looks no other deity is my devi may the great devi kamakshi my mother sprout in my heart everlasting devotion to her feet let me not be devoted even a little to other gods my heart's desires are to always dwell in the lotus feet of the omniscient devi may maheshwari bring about that in my heart after praising the devi tripurambika thus manmatha filled with devotion again and again prostrated before her then devi tripura uttered sweet words thus my child rise i am pleased with you ask for your desired boon i shall grant that to you even if it is a rare one there is nothing that you cannot get listening to the words of the universal mother manmatha whose dark ignorance had vanished by a mere look at the devi and whose desires were fulfilled having cited shri tripura sundari who was none other than his own self power stood up and addressed with satisfaction and folded hands to the devi o tripuramba my thirst has been quenched by drinking the nectar of citing your feet what do i beg from you there is nothing more to be achieved asking for a boon would be like drinking salt water after tasting ambrosia my my asking for a boon after seeing you would be just ridiculous o oh mother i will simply obey your instructions hearing manmatha the compassionate and smiling transcendental devi said thus o oh kama my child there is nothing left for you to be achieved for him who has understood the knowledge about the self 
even the status of Brahma will be equal to a straw. Even then, the purpose for which you have approached me should not be defeated because no action will go west. There will be no one on the earth in the neither neither world or in the heaven whom you cannot conquer. Take this bow and these arrows, saying thus the universal mother gave from her bow and the arrows equally powerful bow and arrows to Kama and pleased with Manmatha again said, O son of Rama, may you be blessed with excellent auspiciousness in all your endeavors in this world. Seen by you, may all people lose courage. May you be an example for prosperity in the world and be the foremost among my devotees. O Manmatha, the most excellent fifteen-lettered mantra taught to you in your dream will become famous by your name because you are the first person to have practiced it. The hundred and eight names taught to you by Rama and the nine stanzas sung by you which contain the letters of the Sri Vidya and which are the devotional outbursts May these two prayers and the Sri Vidya, which will make you prosperous, become the source of prosperity to everyone. In this world, let this mantra be known as Saubhagya Vidya. Let the hundred and eight names be called Saubhagya Ashtottara, and let the nine stanzas get the name Saubhagya. Saubhagya Vartana and let the nine stanzas get the name Saubhagya Navaratna. I will be quickly pleased with those who read these hymns. Persons desiring education will become educated those desiring wealth will become wealthy those wanting progeny will beget children those seeking wives will get married all the desires of the persons who read this prayer will be fulfilled they will never face misfortune o manmatha listen i will very soon bless the persons who chant this prayer which can entirely grant the ones saying thus the glory of the hundred and eight names and the Sri Vidya Devi Tripura Sundari disappeared. End of the twenty fifth chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam. Chapter twenty six. Listening to the unsurpassed glory of the prayers, Parashurama again inquired Guru Dattatriya, O Lord, my thirst for listening is increasing every second while I am drinking through my ears the elixir of speech flowing out of your lotus visage. Please compassionately teach me your servant the hundred and eight names of Devi that conferred enticing prosperity on Kama and which expounds the letters of the Saubhagya Vidya. Hearing the words of Parashurama, the munificently merciful Dattatriya addressed him with sweet words, O Bhargava, listen to the hundred and eight names that are the repository of the gem-like letters of Sri Vidya about which you have inquired. The Puranas and the Agamas contain a myriad of names of the Devi. Among them this Saubhagya Ashtottara which was revealed to Sri Bhavani by Shiva after many requests contains the essence of it all. For this Ashtottara 
prayer shiva is the rishi the prasadi is anushtup and shri lalitambika is the devi the process of installation or imbibing is through the three sections kutas of the mantra the prayer should be recited after mentally meditating and worshiping the devi she is kameshwari the concert of kameshwara kama shakti devi controlling the desires kama saubhagya dayini who blessed manmatha with prosperity kama rupa she has herself manifested as kama kamakala shri vidya kamini lovely kamalasana seated on a lotus or brahmi kamala the manifestation of kamala lakshmi kalpana hina beyond mental comprehension kamaniya extremely attractive charming kalavati the embodiment of all arts kamala bharati sevya attended by lakshmi and saraswati kalpita shesha samshrute has created the entire family of the world by her volition anuttara no one excels her anagha devoid of demerit or sanctifying ananta limitless adbhuta rupa marvelously manifested ana lodbhava ana lodbhava born from fire ati loka charitra of supernatural adventure ati sundari most beautiful ati subhaprada bestower of the highest auspiciousness aghahantri destroyer of sins ati vishishtara ati vistara of extremely fast form archana tushta pleased with worship amita prabha infinitely effulgent eka rupa of unique form एक वीरा ऑफ यूनिक वैलर एक नाथा यूनिक प्रोटेक्ट्रेस एकांतर जनप्रिया लाइक्स टू बी वर्शिप्ड इन सीक्रेसी एक bhavat bhavatushta pleased with single minded devotion ek rasa the undifferentiated bliss ekanta janapriya likes secluded or detached persons ida mana prabhava of 
ever increasing brilliances eda bhakta pataka nashini destroys the rampant sins of her devotees ela moda mukha a mouth fragrant like cardamom seed eno drishakriyu dhyasa masthite he a thunderbolt unto the mountain of sins iha sunya the desireless ipsita sought by the devotees isha the shevya attended by ishana and others ishana varangana devoted wife of ishvara ishvara gnyapika controls comments ishvara ikara bhavya meditated on her seed letter e ipsita falaprada grants the wants ishana the ruler of the universe itihara destroyer of distress iksha the universal witness isha darunakshi with slightly red eyes ishwareshwari the devi of even ishvara lalita delights the mind lalana rupa of attractive form layahina imperishable lasat tanuh brilliant form laya sarva brings an end to everything layak shonihe platform of destruction laya karni supporter of dissolution layatmika the embodiment of dissolution that is kalika laghima the manifestation of laghima power that is the power to contract laghu madhyadhya with slender waist lalamana sportive laghu druta moves briskly haya ruda rides a horse hata hata mitra killer of foes harakanta concert of shiva hari stuta praised and sung by hari vishnu hayagri veshtada fulfiller of the wants of hayagriva halapriya who reveals in the varuni drink can be found in lalita trishati name 120 harsha samuddhata elated with joy harsana confers joy bliss hallaka bhangi with a body resembling red lotus hastyantai shwariya 
దాయిని who grants reaches hip to the height of an elephant hala hasta chitapada whose feet are worshiped by the wielder of the plow that is balarama havirudhana prasadini blesses those who offer oblations to the fire rama rama ramarchita rama ramarchita worshiped by shri rama and balarama ragni the impress ramya enchanting ravamayi the embodiment of sound shabda brahma ratihi manifest as rati devi rakshini protectress protector ramani sports with her devotees and attendants raka shines like the full moon ramani mandala priya fond of the congregation of lovely ladies rakshita khila loka protector of the entire universe isha the supreme rakshogana nisudini destroyer of the gang of demons amba the mother antakarini the destroyer during deluge ambhoja priya fond of lotus antaka bhayankari frightens even yama the god of death amburupa manifests as water ambujakara holds the lotus in her hands ambuja jata varaprada grants boons to the lotus born brahma anta puja priya antah puja priya likes inward worship antah swarupini the inner self antar vacho mai the inner voice antakara ti vamana kashtita seated on the left thigh of the destroyer of yama antaha sukha ropini the inner bliss sarvagya the omniscient one sarvaga the omnipresent one sara the essence of all sama the impartial one samasukha the undifferentiated bliss of shiva sati the eternal companion of shiva sannati santatihi santatihi the uninterrupted progeny santata the eternal one soma the moon the inner energy sarva the one in all sankhya the science of universal soul sanatani the primeval one or durga o parashurama i have told you the 108 names that are essence of all the names and are to be kept extremely secret a prayer equal to this is very difficult to find in the three worlds this should not be disclosed to 
atheists who are not devoted to Devi, Tripurambika, Sadashiva, Hara, and other daily and others daily recite this prayer. By the power of this prayer, Manmatha conquers quickly the three worlds. For that person who recites this beautiful Saubhagya Shtattara Shatanama prayer at the three sandhis, that is sunrise, midday and sunset, there is nothing unattainable on the earth. Recitation of this prayer is considered as a must for the worshippers of Sri Vidya. A single reading of this will take care of the deficiencies in their other actions. The daily and special recites the daily and special rites performed without reciting this prayer would be a waste similar to the rites performed by a nude person. A devotee who is unable to read the thousand names and the like will reap hundred fold benefit by reading this prayer of hundred and eight names. By reciting this one thousand times one can destroy the enemy by a stare. One can command the worlds by offering oblations of red karavira flowers. One can stupefy the enemy by oblations of white flowers and extirpate through blue flowers. Oblations of paper destroys the enemies and of lavanga clove cars and of lavanga clove cures diseases. Oblations of paper destroys the enemies and of lavanga clove cures diseases. The person who feeds married ladies and brahmins after reciting these names of worship, the Devi with flowers of fruits for each name will permanently dwell in the abode of the Devi. Sri Lalita, the Empress, will bless and grant the desires of the person who continuously repeats these hundred and eight names. O Parashurama, I have thus told you about the prayer. Now listen to the relevant story. Kama, after obtaining the great boon from the Devi, immediately subdued human beings, gods, demons, kinnaras, yakshas, kimpurushas, and others. After a lapse of time, Kama, who went with a desire to conquer Mahadeva, was reduced to ashes like a moth by facing the fire of anger. I will tell you the story. O Rama, listen patiently. Devi Gauri, born as Dakshayani, was reduced to ashes in the yajna of her father after hearing the insult to her husband Mahesha. Then Gauri remained in the incorporeal form. After a very long time, Himavan, the lord of the mountains, seeing Narada approaching him, stood up and worshipped with devotion the divine sage by offering him water, garland, eatables, scented unguents, clothes and ornaments and fed him with a tasty meal. Then Himavan addressed the highly auspicious divine sage who was seated in the assembly. O divine sage, seeing you, I am blessed today on this earth because a small person like me has been allowed to serve you, the son of Brahma. O Lord, let me know from which world you came and with what purpose. Rarely can one see you. What is your next desired destination? Thus inquired Narada with words like dripping honey spoke to Himavan to inform him about his journey. O Lord of Mountains, I came from the Satya Loka to see the fortunate ones like you and I will proceed to the abode of Shiva. Listening to Narada, Himavan addressed him humbly thus, O Lord, how are you calling me fortunate? 
with the agony of childlessness i am extremely pitiable and unfortunate hearing him avan narada consoled him and said thus o king of mountains listen i will tell how you are fortunate presently because you are devoted to the feet of parashakti i called you blessed in this world persons with low righteous merit cannot have such great devotion that shakti who is worshiped day and night by brahma vishnu rudra and others is universally supreme in whom dwells the entire creation i have known by yogic vision what the sage vamadeva taught you day before yesterday that sage who preached to you is the exponent of goddess worship therefore tell me who else other than you can be fortunate in the world listening to narada himavan said again thus o brahman through your yogic vision you can see the past and the future there is nothing within the triple time frame that is unknown to you i will ask you something please tell me who who is your servant o brahman there is no happiness in this world without having children hence let me know the means by which i will have an offspring hearing himavan narada endowed with spiritual vision meditated for a moment and addressed the lord of the mountains thus o mountain king i know you have no children i see no way out but you will beget a daughter who will cause pain to you let me tell you that progeny will bring misery there is no one in this world who is happy with children more so understand that a daughter is the source of distress if the supreme devi blesses you then even a daughter will bring happiness hearing those words of narada himavan said again thus o lord i heard from bamadeva that the parashakti is alphabetical in nature and it is not possible to comprehend her thus when her form is extremely hidden and beyond speech tell me how can i have her grace hearing thus the intelligent narada said thus o himavan indeed she is subtle trans transcendental inexpressible supreme tripura the universal cause only great yogis know her who dwells in all within their being and none else so o himavan meditate on her alternative gross form which is visible to all and get your wants even the visible forms are infinite that are meditated by devotees among them meditate soon on gauri mridani the intellectual and transcendent and transcendent form of mahadevi and obtain your wishes hearing narada himavan inquired again thus o lord o sage who is the devi known as gauri what is her form what is her story what is her power let me know hearing himavan sage narada then said thus o lord of mountain listen to the auspicious form of gauri she the great devi has manifested from the vaishnava aspect of parashakti blue in color seated on the lion having three eyes wearing the moon on her head wielding in her lotus like hands the sword the shield the trident and the club she is the consort of shiva shankara who having been under her protection does not suffer while destroying the creation this devi after discarding her 
causal form was born to Daksha Prajapati and upon hearing the insult to her husband got burnt up and took ethereal form and is not willing to have a physical form even upon the request from the gods. Without her, Shiva is unhappy. O Himavan, propitiate her and request her to be born as your daughter. Having her as your daughter, you will shine and become venerable in the world and lauded by gods. You will also have the fame of becoming the father-in-law of Mahadeva with Parashakti as your daughter you will attain happiness fame and glory in this world end of the 26th chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam